Good morning, everyone. This is Katie Novotny calling from Premier Marketing. I wanted to thank everyone for attending this morning. As you can see, uh, we have quite a bit of things going on with the long-term care world. So with our carrier announcements, rate adjustments, issue ages changing, and everything else that we're watching that is going on in our industry, we thought there wasn't a better time to launch the nationwide latest presentation of what in the world is going on with the LTC market. This morning, I am thrilled to have Alyssa De La Cruz from Nationwide joining us, and she will walk us through this presentation. As you have questions, feel free to type them in. I will be happy to answer as we go, and if there's anything at the end, we will then address. So again, please feel free to type any questions in as we go. Alyssa, are you ready to take it away? I am. Thank you, Katie. So I'm going to skip through some of these disclosures. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alyssa Dela Cruz. Um, so I am so excited to actually give this presentation. It's one of our newer ones, but I think it's one that's definitely relevant for today. And I can tell by everyone in the audience um, that this may be something that's really important to you during this time. So that's really my goal is to go over that. Um, if for some reason you can't see my screen, Katie, just let me know. Or if something's not looking clear, just stop me ahead of time. But really what we're going to cover today is a couple of things that I find really important right now is what's going on in the marketplace because I think that's the number one question I get. What's changing? How are pricing changing? Are you expecting another price change? It's probably the number one question we get. We definitely aren't anticipating a price change within our solutions when it comes to long-term care this year, but definitely um, 2021 may be something different with everything that's going on, but um, that's probably one we're going to cover. Some challenges, some solutions, some updates we want to review, some options. I think that's really important to know as well as what are my options when I'm talking to my clients. Certainly, we would hope that we are front of mind when you're considering long-term care, but we want you to be prepared for maybe where that may make sense because sometimes it makes more sense to go to a different kind of long-term care solution and understanding those differences is going to be important too. And then that opportunity within Nationwide with those options where that may make sense. And then the value of cash indemnity. That's what our long-term care is. That's really what we stand by. Um, I don't see us really going into a reimbursement solution. We really love cash indemnity because we think it makes sense for a lot of families to have that flexibility and we'll go over that flexibility if you had had opportunity to look at it or just need a refresher on it. So what we're seeing right now is a lot of the new normal is what I call it. Um, you're going to see a lot of the effects that are going on, especially with the interest rate environment, um, declines, that's going to be a big one, what's going on with that with your clients. Uh, probably number one thing you're probably getting right now is a lot of people don't want to really interact face-to-face -face most of the time. They need not be comfortable with that. How do you address that? How does a solution meet you where you are today to have that flexibility? You're also going to have to deal with some of those fears that clients may have with their finances, um, personal and financial. How does that new normal change, especially since that might be something that they're concerned about and maybe be pushing off long-term care planning? Is their job secure? That's probably a big one. Is that going to change for me? Maybe I'm holding off some big decisions because of that. Um, retirement accounts, am I contributing? All of those things, all of that might be on hold, and you're probably seeing that to some degree, if not a majority, if maybe a little bit. So I've done a little bit of everything is where, hey, my clients don't really want to do anything right now to take everything's kind of back to normal. It's just a little bit different. I'm doing a lot of that virtually or over the phone. And then can I afford to do these kind of planning? That's probably something you're kind of concerned about. And how do I get that client to really understand that importance of, I still need to do that planning. It's a huge part of what I do, but how does that make that difference? And then um, really the question that I want to pose to you and leave with you and hopefully that you're able to answer today, can I afford not to plan today? If I do, what does that look like? Um, and things that I need to know as, a client, what are those risks? What are those consequences if I say, hey, not right now? And that's an important one to know. Um, so we'll give you a lot of good feedback and statistics that are great for you. I wouldn't necessarily say we share that with the client because the statistics, nobody thinks it's going to be them, but it's a good reality check for us in the industry to say, well, what's going on and why is it so important to continue to plan with my client because of what's going, how declines, how 
industry is changing, can they really afford to wait on long-term care planning? And then we have to shift to something that may still be a good plan, but if there was a better plan, how do we plan a little bit earlier? So interest rates probably a big one right now. So what we're seeing are probably a lot of the effects that you're seeing within the solutions in the industry is a lot of reprices happened in the last couple of months from a lot of hybrid carriers, any really long-term care policy company that's worked with these uh, products, we've all been impacted by a low interest rate environment. Not necessarily anything to do with COVID. That's usually what I get is, is that why you price decreased? Is that why you did age limits? It's really uh, the low interest rate environment. These products are really sensitive to how the interest rate environment is going. So when it is down, like we're seeing right now, it impacts how we can design these products um, one, to make them profitable and be able to show you the solutions and that flexibility that you see. So that's really what happened in the industry is the interest rate environment is really low. So people had to, companies had to reprice to still be able to offer these solutions. And that's why you may have seen a lot of those age limit restrictions as well. Um, one, probably because that wasn't as profitable at an older age range. To, if we had to reprice it, it probably wouldn't have made sense to even show that option at this point. We're definitely hopeful that that will improve so that we can continue to extend those ages and give you continued uh, good pricing. But that's what you're seeing right now, and that's why you've seen those changes within linked benefits. Um, you've, you've seen that definitely standalone policies. Uh, they've been exposed to those rate increases or that lower interest rate environment as well. The long-term care writer. Um, that's really a, a solution that you see on life insurance where the goal is life insurance and you put that rider on there, like a GUL with long-term care or an IUL, if you will. Um, you haven't really seen that price change on the rider itself. It may be more of that base policy that may have been impacted if there was one. And that just depends on if that product was guaranteed, especially when you have all those kind of guarantees in a product. It does have a little bit of that impact because it is sensitive to a low interest rate environment because of what the decisions you have to make to really make that product uh, perform the way you need to. When there is a low interest rate environment, that's where you may see those price increases. You're not really gonna see that on the LTC rider itself, but maybe more of the base policy. And then self-funding, that's always an option that we see a lot with clients. They always have that opportunity to, but um, it's maybe a slower growing now because of that interest rate environment so that's something to keep in mind, especially if that's the option the client is going with, whether that's because of health reasons they have to do that way or if they feel that's the best option for them. It may just be a slower growth rate for them, and that might be where maybe we want to talk about a different kind of plan because we want to ensure, just depending on that individual's age, that you do have enough during, um, if that stage happens in retirement, a slow-growing self-funding plan may not work as hard as you need it to. So your solution here is obviously to look at some guaranteed options that give you guarantees. So if that's the concern for a lot of the clients or what you're seeing, your solution really would be, well, how do I find a product that has guarantees so I don't have to worry about um, this impacting them? You want to see those guarantees. Linked benefits are going to be a huge opportunity there because everything in there is locked in. What you see today and what you're paying on that policy, it's all locked in. Your benefit's not going to change. No one's coming back and asking you for additional premium, which is going to be a huge one. Um, that's really probably going to be more on that linked benefit, potentially that life and LTC rider. Standalone, typically not. Um, there's always that opportunity for a price increase, and you don't really know if it will happen, so that's kind of that risky play with that one. But um, your solution here, if that is a concern of, well, what if I end up in another scenario like this 10 years from now? Or if, what if this continues to extend to next year, the next 10 years? That's going to be a big important aspect of that planning is they need a solution that locks everything in so that they are protected and know exactly what they have and know that nothing's going to change. Now, market changes is another one that's been a concern on my portfolio, how it's the volatility of it that's a real big concern right now is, well, if the market's down or my assets are down, what do I do there? This isn't the right time to plan for long-term care, maybe what my client's thinking. As um, a financial professional, you may be looking at, well, typically we see a lot of single pays in these solutions. Not to say that that's the only way to go. You 
obviously have a lot of flexibility when it comes to planning. Um, and I know within our solution, you can do anything as um, short as a single pay all the way to pay to 100. So everything kind of falls in between, but I would say probably the most popular options are that single pay. But with that being said, that may not be something the client's looking to do right now. A single pay during this time, or if I'm concerned about the market, I don't want to take out a huge chunk of my assets and put it into a policy. Even if that would save me more in the long run, I may want to extend that. That might be my solution. And that's where you say, well, if that's the concern. How do I work that a little bit differently? And that's looking at options that, okay, maybe we don't do a single pay. Maybe we do a 10 pay instead. Yes, you're going to pay a little bit more over that 10-year span. But when we're able to break it down in the end, it gives that a portfolio time to recover if that's a big concern, if it had um, an impact during this time. It gives you time or even in the future because really this could happen at any point. You may be dealing with um, – a portfolio that's down right now and that's a concern in the future where I don't I don't want to do a single pay. A 10 pay can still make a lot of sense. One, you're covering that planning, but two, you're letting those accounts recover without taking a chunk of it. Um, so we have a lot of material that we can share with you afterwards that kind of goes through that concept of, okay, if your portfolio is down right now or maybe what you would have taken that single pay from, how would it have recovered? And that's the goal. If it's able to recover, if I take a 10 pay and take a little bit every year versus a big chunk, I've let that account recover. I plan for long-term care. Sure, my long-term care bucket isn't as big as if I did a single pay, but in the long run, when I compare those accounts, I've let that account recover, plan for long-term care, and in many cases, it may turn out in the end that it was a positive impact on that overall portfolio to do it that way versus doing a single pay. So that's just a shift in conversation of, we don't need to do a single pay. We can look at a 10 pay, maybe even a five pay if that still works or pay to 65, pay to 100, whatever that may be that case, there's still a way to address that concern and still make sure we're planning for long-term care. Now, obviously the pandemic considerations that we want to think about is how do I apply for a policy? I don't want to have someone come into my home and draw blood or go anywhere to draw blood. Um, you're looking for simplified underwriting, and that's what you're going to find um, with a long-term care policy, depending on where you're looking. I know within our solution, it's an interview. You're not dealing with having to have someone come into your home and draw blood. It's all done over the phone. You can do the application process um, online, so the client never has to feel that, I don't feel safe going in and doing this right now. I want to be able to do this all comfortably at home. You can still do that and still plan. And then receiving care safely, that might be another one is um, something that people may be thinking about. I know I see an article daily about nursing homes and people being concerned about, well, how do I, is this policy going to even take care of me if this happens again? Am I going to be able to receive care safely? That's something that is a huge opportunity there is knowing that um, if I need my plan to change in the future, like I'm seeing today with my family or my parents as that client, um, how do I limit my exposure to these caregivers? That solution is going to be a cash indemnity opportunity. Cash indemnity lets your plan change as it fits you. If you want 100% to stay at home, then have that opportunity. I've seen a lot of cases where that may be the case where um, I, we had caregivers coming in and out of the house for a particular client that I had heard about was um, they, ha they were able to stay at home, but the caregiver were changing maybe with a couple of them a week exposing that particular mother of that client to three different people during this time and that was a concern for them cash indemnity that allowed that particular client to stay home i have to work from home anyway i can take care of her i can use the benefits maybe to help supplement anything i may have to take some time off of work if that was the case but if not those benefits are for mom to save at that time if she needs it. But now I can change that care. I don't have to have somebody coming in for her to receive benefits. It could be me in that case. So knowing that a cash indemnity, if that's a concern for your client during this time, if they're reading those articles too, hey, cash indemnity gives you that flexibility. If you don't want to be in a facility, if that's the choice that you wanted to make and wanted to come home for a while so some of your loved ones could take care of you and you're not exposed to different people, 
that's really where that flexibility comes in hand. Um, I know that's come up a lot and been a huge opportunity for clients to say, I didn't realize I had that option. I thought if I'm in a facility, kind of that's where I'm going to be. There's nowhere else I could get benefits. You have that opportunity. Cash indemnity can change with what makes sense for you. And uh, during a pandemic like this, that might be something that comes up a little bit more is what happens? Can I still receive care safely if I need to change my plan? And then income security is probably a big one. Affordability fears. Um, do I have job security? Will I be able to make premium payments? Um, what if also your retirement? Can I afford these premiums and have income for life? So with linked benefits, something to keep in mind is having that escape clause that we call it. You have that opportunity to one, built into that product and how you design it. You do have the ability to have a refund of premium. So if for some reason, the client's concerned about that and down the road something changes, they have that opportunity to get a refund of premium. That's going to be a huge one for them that sometimes is peace of mind. And depending on how you design it, they could be 100% of that return of premium within a couple of years to maybe it's just cash value, but still majority of it. So just depending on how you want to design it, there's still that aspect that they may not have seen in another solution. And that may add some peace of mind. And then also there's that opportunity, okay, well, what if I still want this policy, but I just can't contribute anymore? You have that opportunity to reduce pay up this policy based on the premium you put into the policy. So if you put half of it in, essentially you would have half of those benefits, if you will. So that might be something that they may be concerned with. I still want it, but what if I can't continue to pay those premium payments? You have that option too. So that adds to that peace of mind to that client of, okay, well, yes, I know I need it. Um, but now, now I'm concerned about my job. I'm concerned about being able to afford this policy. There's some opportunities there to say, hey, I can add that peace of mind and know you have a return of premium if you need it. Or if you want to continue the policy based on what you put in, we can reduce pay up and create kind of a new policy based on which is already in there. So that's really the goal there is adding that other layer of protection of giving you that cash indemnity if you're needing it. We can design it differently so you're not paying it all up front. But knowing that if you need to leave the policy or need to make changes in that sense of I can't continue the premium payments, you can do that as well. So know that may be a concern on your client's mind or maybe something that's already come up during the conversation. I'm just skipping over here. This is probably one of my favorite slides in here just because I think it's good information for us to walk away with and understanding what is the risk of waiting to plan for long-term care. So with the long-term care industry, obviously we've had a lot of time to really underwrite these clients and see what makes sense and fine tune it versus 30 years ago when maybe a lot of these policies were coming out. What we're seeing is declines are going up and that's because we've been able to fine tune that underwriting. So what you're gonna see here is between 2012 and 2019, this is purely based on the, these numbers right here for our traditional LTC space you're gonna see that the declines have gone up and that's that risk of waiting of, you may get more unhealthy and conditions may pop up as you get older and that makes that harder for you to get that policy. Sure, you may be insurable for life insurance and that's great, but long-term care is a different underwriting. Um, it's slightly different in that sense that those conditions are gonna come into play. Is that condition gonna to lead to you needing long-term care sooner or needing it at all? And that's that risk of I'm healthy right now, but next year something can change, especially as I get older. So below age uh, 50, we're seeing those declines are up in the traditional LTC space, 228%. That's a big number. 50 to 59, up 50%. And you can kind of see right now from 2019 what that difference looks like as well. Ages 60 to 64, I would say those two numbers that up 50% from 50 to 59, and 60 to 64, this is probably the majority of those applications we see come in in this space is this is that group that's coming to look for a long-term care policy. So declines are up. One in four almost declined in that 60 to 64 range and so forth. And we can see as the older the client gets, the more possibility that they're going to have a decline. So not only we're going to get into how waiting in the sense of premium changes, because that's going to go up if you wait longer, but now the risk of I want this policy, but now as I get older, there's more of a risk. I might 
may not even be able to get approved and now I have to change that plan. Still a good idea to have a plan, but maybe it's not the plan I would have ideally wanted. But the good news is outside of traditional long-term care space is how does this work in a linked benefit structure because we're not traditional LTC? Well, we're seeing obviously declines are still up, but based on that number, because there is a life component in how we design these products, it does help us in the sense of how those declines look, even though um, they are up in general as an industry, compared to a traditional LTC policy, they're 25% to 50% lower than these numbers that you see here. Obviously declines are still up, but in the sense of if you're looking at traditional LTC versus a linked benefit solution, you're gonna have a better chance, at least in underwriting because of how that component works. It's not just purely long-term care, that life insurance component does help in that case. But we wanna hopefully get them in early if they want that policy so they have the best chance to get approved and not have a health condition come up that could um, change that decision for them. Now that financial cost of waiting, this is a big one, um, probably not a huge one between 55 and 60, but you can kind of see, hey, I, wanna, I need $5,000 in benefits. How does that change as I get older? Well, at age 80, I'm gonna put in this premium. You're gonna see at the end, they'll say, we're gonna do a 10 pay. I'm gonna pay 115,000 at 55 over 10 years for that 5,000. And my benefit is gonna be um, at age 80, because I put inflation on it, it's gonna be $10,469, which is great. My annual premium is 11,500. But you can see between that age 55 to 60, not a huge difference. Obviously, I'm a little concerned about, well, the decline rate is obviously a little bit different. But okay, if I waited five years, maybe my benefit dropped to 9,000. And I am gonna pay a little bit more premium, I'll pay 133,000. But let's look at that difference between, hey, I waited from, I looked at it at 55, but I don't do anything till age 65. And that's just today's numbers. I don't know what that will look like in the future. At 65, well, now my benefit at age 80 is 7,000, let's say 800, 7,800 a month versus had I done it 10 years earlier, that inflation would have had time to grow. I would have been at 10,400. And then on top of it, I'm paying an extra $50,000 over that 10 year span because I waited 10 years. And then that gets even further apart, the older, obviously age 70, it's really we're going to see that biggest hit. We'll say it's even close to almost half in that case of how your benefit changes. And now I'm paying over $100,000 more just by have waiting that 15 years. And that's the goal of having this conversation early. One, we don't want you to have a risk of that decline, but two, that financial risk of waiting is a big one of planning earlier saves you more in the end but on top of it gets you that better chance of getting the policy that you're looking for because you're healthier. And then planning is enough. How do I know I have enough uh, coverage? Um, what is, how long will a claim last? So when you're looking, you wanna look at that value of your policy. We know an average claim is about four years. Our most popular option in the industry is probably six year duration. Um, that's probably the most common one, not to say you couldn't do another one, but what we're seeing in general is that you're gonna be able to get more benefits overall in six years versus four years, and that break even points about four and a half years. And then inflation is a huge component. So if you're concerned about how much is this gonna be enough, is this even worth planning? That's a, a huge consideration is one, is the duration a good enough time for my client? And then can I add inflation? The younger they are, the better chance that inflation works for them. Somebody coming in at 65, 70, Inflation is probably not going to look very good for them versus had they started at 55, it would make more sense to have inflation and then have it, that break-even point, look a lot better for them. Here are your options. You have traditional LTC. Obviously, the thing you want to keep in mind, um, it generally just pays for long-term care. It's a use it or lose it kind of scenario. Premiums aren't guaranteed. You go through full underwriting. So there may be some contact with the client and that carrier to some degree. Um, linked benefit, you're gonna have, it's not a use it or lose it. There is return of premium features. There's death benefits to ensure that initial investment. You're gonna have life insurance with a long-term care writer that may be more for a client that still needs life insurance to it. So that's something to keep in mind. And then the long-term care annuity. The one I see most likely where that comes in maybe 
that comes more into play, maybe where that client couldn't really qualify for the life, ins life insurance component of the linked benefit or the life of the LTC rider, that's maybe where I see a lot of those individuals go. And sometimes you don't get that same kind of leverage if they end up on an LTC annuity. Not to say that it's a bad option or anything, or any of these are bad options, or one's better than the other. It's just knowing that there are different ways to play it and understanding how they work can make a huge difference on how much that plan looks different for your client or how much leverage their dollar is going to work for them. Typically, you see a lot of that leverage on a linked benefit, a traditional LTC space. It's just a difference of is a guarantees and being able to, if I don't have a long-term care event, be able to get my investment out in some kind of way in a death benefit format. All of those things come into play when you're kind of looking at traditional and linked benefits or the life and LTC rider. So when we're talking about our opportunities, we want you to know that sometimes people need tax breaks and Care Matters too. Um, we have another version, but this particular version gives you that opportunity to talk about tax advantages with the client. Um, businesses as well, if you have clients that are business, um, they are LLC, they are C Corp, they want those tax deductions and planning for long-term care may be a huge component. So they have that opportunity too within the nationwide solution, Care Matters too particularly you have that tax deduction. So there's a huge opportunity. This is probably our number one conversation today is how do I get a tax deduction for my business client or for the individual? How does that work? So that's an opportunity to meet your clients where they are today. And then estate planning, excuse me, estate planning is going to be a big one. Cash indemnity in an islet um, helps prevent unnecessary taxation, uh, especially if a client's looking to self-fund. We want to have that conversation because there may be a better way to plan that, especially if estate taxes is a concern for your particular client. Cash and debt can make a difference in how you plan for that and um, just really avoid a, a really big tax hit by planning a little bit differently if an event like this happened for them. These are the solutions we have for you today. You have the writer, you have Care Matters 2, we, have, um, we don't have an annuity version, but these are the ones you definitely have access to. And just know with cash indemnity, you have the most flexibility. You can choose the kind of care that you want. Um, it's as flexible as you're going to have it. You don't have to do receipt. You can pivot to however your plan needs to change. It's not something you need to be approved from us to say, yep, you can do that. As long as it's in your plan of care, we're okay with it. So if your doctor says, hey, I'm fine with your loved ones taking care of you, we're okay with that too. So however your plan changes or however your needs change, cash indemnity gives you that most flexibility without having to really come to us to say, can I do this? Oh, um, can I get that maximum benefit? Do I have receipts for all these costs? You don't have to worry about that. You know that if I say $10,000 a month, it's yours to use however you deem necessary and what makes sense for you that day. So essentially, we know the wait, waiting is, can be a huge risk in the sense of cost and then health-wise of declining. Market fears are gonna be a big one, but they can certainly be smoothed over with having different premium options, and cash indemnity can give you that flexibility. And then on top of it, if it isn't a Care Matters 2 that you're looking for, you know that you have a suite of options with a nationwide when it comes to long-term care to really help you tailor what makes sense for your client. If it's, hey, there's still a death insurance need, then maybe we pivot to an LTC rider versus a linked benefit solution. So I'm going to turn it back over to Katie, so I'm uh, respectful of your time to see if we had any questions. Alyssa, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, I, I really appreciate it. A couple questions for you, and um, as I'm reading these out, like I said, please feel free, anyone else that has questions, to type these in. Uh, questions on underwriting, and also mm -hmm. underwriting in compared to if you would put it on an LTC annuity. Um, I, okay. You, you know, if you, if you want to address yours, we can address generalized LTC annuities as well yeah yeah um so how underwriting is a little bit different um with the linked benefit is there's still a life ins uh, insurance component to it so um you are doing mortality and morbidity at the same time so that's going to be that biggest difference so sometimes i may see where somebody may not be approved for a linked benefit product because it may be that that combination of well we wouldn't really improve them for life insurance because of xyz conditions they may be able to go into an annuity because there's a little bit more flexibility because they're just purely underwriting that long-term care component to it. Um, 
and that's still a good option. So sometimes I see that if they can't get the link benefit where they may have gotten more leverage for their dollar, they may go to annuity um, so that they can still get some kind of benefits for our long-term care benefits so they don't have to get taxed on it. So it's a little bit of an upgrade versus just annuity. Um, it's very similar in the sense of the long-term care underwriting. It's just a difference of, well, I'm able to maximize my benefits. So sometimes I see that may, uh, where maybe if a couple couldn't get approved together or um, maybe the, one of the spouses gets that link benefit because they got more leverage and then the other one that couldn't get maybe that traditional LTC or the link benefit, they may go to the annuity just to make sure they get some kind of planning. Perfect, perfect. Um, two more I have. One, do you accept qualified funds? So how it works with qualified funds is a little bit different, not directly into this particular product. There are ways for us to design it. We may use, or if you don't want to use our uh, annuity, you could use another carrier's if you prefer it. Um, it's just ease of use to do it all in-house with us, so you don't have to manage that. But you could do put it into a single premium annuity, um, and then that single premium annuity would fund Care Matters. So any of that distribution over, let's say, 10 years is that typical design. That single premium, that FIA would pay for that premium into that Care Matters. You would still get taxed on any of the distribution from the FIA, but that's the only way it works. And essentially, it works the same um, with another carrier that I'm familiar with that does it. It's just kind of done behind the scenes. So essentially, you can do it. It's just not going to be, because it's still a life insurance product, you have to still have some kind of an annuity to help make that work. Perfect. Perfect. Um, is there a premium waiver in Care Matters? Good question. So the premium waiver is on, there's an LTC premium waiver on the pay to 100 option. All the other options, you would need to continue to make your premium payments if you wanted to maintain that same amount of benefits. So if you didn't, you could do that option that I mentioned, reduce pay up, so that you didn't have to continue to make premium payments. But remember, because it's cash indemnity, you can use your benefits to pay for any uh, premium, which is typically which will make sense in most cases. Um, I would say it's a rare scenario that you would choose to do that reduced pay up versus using your benefits to pay the premium so that you can keep that full dollar amount. And um, that's kind of the goal. Typically, you'll see that is maybe they'll use their benefits to pay the premium or finish off the premium. Perfect. Um, issue ages on this product. Yeah, so we can go as low as age 30, um, and currently uh, that uh, cutoff is age 70. Perfect. Uh, a couple more things. Can the premiums be paid from HSA account? Good question. Because of how you divide, how I mentioned there is uh, those tax advantages, you do have that opportunity. So if you... Um, have, it breaks down a life insurance premium and the long-term care premium within the illustration. The LTC premium is el eligible for you to make a HSA distribution. Um, there are usually age-based limits to keep in mind. So depending on how old that client is, the IRS says, hey, this is how much you're eligible to use. Um, so if it says, I know maybe for a 40-year-old, it's maybe $800 and change. Uh, of that premium, I can get 800 to use for my HSA because that's the limit the IRS said I could use. But the older you are, that number gets bigger, somewhat, sometimes as high as like $4,500. So um, you can do that. Perfect. Uh, a couple more questions. Does Nationwide have a reduced paid up premium LTC product option? Reduced paid up LTC premium. Um, and maybe if I'm not answering this correctly, let me know. So you can reduce pay up this particular policy. So you do have that opportunity. So if you decide, hey, I'm, I was going to pay $100,000 over 10 years, and we want to be done at $50,000 um, five years in because we just can't pay anymore or for whatever reason, you can reduce pay it up. It would just essentially be half of that policy. So instead of if that pay got you $10,000 a month, that reduced paid up at $50,000 would get you about $5,000 a month. Perfect, perfect. Another one would be, do you anticipate age 70 review after the virus? Do you, so in other words, I think what they're asking is, is, or, or is there going to be consideration to increase issue age? Yes. We definitely want to add that back. It's, uh, and it's not necessarily just the 
COVID scenario, it's the low interest rate environment that's really causing that hindrance more than anything. Um, just because when we all had to reprice that older age, um, typically it gets more expensive like you saw in that summary. So for us to really have shown that option, it probably wouldn't have been worthwhile for that client to purchase that policy because they would be putting in just as much as they would probably have received. So it's more of that low interest rate environment. If that improves, I see us adding back to that 875. Perfect. Um, another one is for husband and wife. Can you combine into one policy or do they need to be separate contracts? As of today, we do only have the ability for to be two separate contracts. But I would still, um, if you're looking at a solution that lets you do that, I would still look at our solution because you may see that, um, or we can break that down for you, where um, you may still be able to get more benefits in this even being two separate policies. It's just how you look at that policy and break it down. Perfect. Well, Alyssa, I think we are out of questions. Um, okay. I want to thank everyone for joining us. This was great information. I, again, welcome any additional questions. If something comes up a little later, I will be sending out the recording. I know that's something I always get questioned on. We will send out the recording. I'm also going to attach some sales and marketing materials. Please feel free to contact us here at Premier. We would be happy to walk you through the product again. And if, even if we need to get Alyssa on the phone, I'm sure she would be more than willing to do a one-on-one -on -one with any one of Absolutely. you. So, uh, Alyssa and everyone out there, I appreciate your time and happy selling. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye, guys.